gave them all to Jesus. And there God my summon title, give them all. And so in the next few minutes, I was speaking from that subject, give them all, inspired by McKenna's song. Let's go to the text of book of Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, verse number 28 down to verse number 30. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 down to verse 30. Bible says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I read one more time. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let's pray. Gracious Father in heaven, hallowed be the name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in this place and for this message as it is in heaven. For thine is the kingdom, is the power and glory. You said, if you be lifted up, you shall draw all men unto yourself. Lord, this morning I pray that may I not be seen, may I not be heard. But may you be seen and heard as you speak to us all. My request, Father, is that you may put your words into my mouth and order my lips and my thoughts to your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> Give them all. Now today is the uh, first Sabbath of the new year. And of course, it is prayer and fasting Sabbath. This is to usher in the 10 days of prayer. I will be starting this coming Wednesday. But as I was thinking through, why do we dedicate ourselves to prayer? Why do we as a church have to set apart time and season to call everyone to come in for prayer? I discovered that friends, as you also know, that life has its feel of conflict, sorrows, pain, suffering, troubles piled upon troubles. I know even as we've closed into the new year, most struggle to find meaning in this meaningless world. In fact, many people perish without hope. Many are giving up even as I'm talking right now. But we are glad to be here today, the first Sabbath of the new year, 2024. We are excited. We are greeting each other. Happy New Year. But I know there's somebody asking, what is new in the new year? To me, or just a change of date in the calendar. Nothing seemed to have changed. I have just transitioned to the new year with the baggage that I bore in 2023. 
I feel no change, no relief. My heart is pained. And so somebody is wondering, what is excitement for? What is a celebration for? For my bills are not paid. And somebody is asking, is there hope in this world? Is there hope for the weary soul? And I invite you, friends, this morning to reason with the words of Jesus who spoke, gave a very special invite. He says, come unto me. You see, Jesus, over time, has mastered the art of ministering to our needs. He knows us more than we do. He is acquainted with our situations. And he meets us at our very point of need in different situations of life. There are different invitations that Jesus has given. You know, to they who are dying or dead hard, Jesus would say, come forth. Like he spoke to Lazarus when he was dead. To the wanting heart, Jesus says, come down. He looked at Zacchaeus on the tree. Zacchaeus needed salvation. And Jesus speaks to him and tells him, Zacchaeus, come down. He understands what to say when you need him for salvation. To the seeking, curious heart, like that of John, the disciple of Jesus. When Jesus was with them and they met Jesus for the first time and they desired to be with him. And they asked Jesus, Jesus, where do you stay? Jesus answered them and told them, come and see. To the seeking heart, Jesus says, come and see. But I find also to the weary heart, to the heart that abandoned, Jesus has a special call, a special invite. He says, come Aren't you me? Can you say amen out there? When Jesus sees your weariness and he sees your burden and he sees your struggle and he sees your pain and you feel like there is no hope for you, Jesus invites you to himself. For he is the only one that can deal with your pain, can deal with your frustration, with your disappointment. So he speaks to the world and says, come unto me, all ye your labor, and I have laid, and, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, yet you shall find rest for your soul. I find that the reason why many are struggling, many are disappointed, many are down with depression, many are frustrated, is because they have no peace in their soul. This morning as I speak to you and in this new year, I know that somebody is here today whose heart is so troubled. But I want in the next few minutes to invite you to walk with Jesus and look at his beautiful invite this morning. He says, come unto me. Now, let me consider this phrase, come unto me. You see, Jesus is always inviting. Can you say amen? Jesus we will never send you away. Jesus, he's always inviting. And he says, come not to the pastor. Come not to the church, but come to me. You know, he calls people to himself. This, in fact, is the favorite word of Jesus. He left the glories of heaven just to speak one powerful word, come. He came to seek that we may go to him. He came. Those who are desperate, they may have hope, not to Jesus. Those who come to him, he makes them what they were yearning to have. He gives them a personal relationship with him. Coming to Jesus, I declare today, is the first step in getting peace for your soul. You will never have peace in your soul. 
Your soul shall not rest not until you come to Jesus. You see, the Bible says men have trusted in chariots and horses, but they will never have peace. David says, I looked up them hills, where shall my help come from until you come to Jesus? This morning, Jesus is inviting everyone who has the privilege to be in 2024. The invite is come unto me. May I inform you, friends, this morning that the Lord has instructed me prayerfully to announce to my church that in this new year, 2024, this is the year of come back to the Lord. God is inviting us. If there is anything you need to celebrate for in this new year, it's not the food you ate or the friends who took you out, but the new and kind invite from Jesus, come back to me. 2024 is a new year to come back to the Lord. It's a come back year. Come back to your senses. Come back from your wandering. Come back from the vanities of life. Come back from the disobedience to obedience. Come back from your brokenness. Come back from all your frustrations. Come back from your slavery to freedom. Come back from bad health to good health. Come back from loss to gain. Come back from lost jobs to new opportunities in 2024. Come back from your failed marriage or uh, to enduring, thriving relationship. Come back from your drunkenness to soberness. Jesus is inviting you in 2024. He declares the year of come back. And you can trust him and come back to him. He says, come unto me. Can you say amen? You see, friends, when Jesus spoke these words, he studied the souls of men and women. He looked at situations of people, the tribulations of his people, and he knew there is no balm in Gilead apart from coming unto him. This morning, I just came by to speak to you to let you know we have been privileged to be given a year of comeback. And he says, You who labor, and I have a laden. You are my target in 2024. Come unto me. You will labor and have a laden. You see, in this statement, friends, Jesus speaks to those who labor for vanities of life. What Solomon calls chasing after the wind. He calls those people who are toiling every day, had toilers in this life, but by people who will never be satisfied even as they wake early in the morning. They seem not to touch what they were chasing after. They are so worried, they are so troubled, they, 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 are, they are so broken in life. And Jesus looks at them as they step in the new year and they're asking, what is new in 2024? The Lord says, come and to me, I have seen your labor, I have seen your vanities, I have seen your struggle. Come unto me. Jesus, this morning, is speaking to all men that have tried and tried in vain to satisfy their conscience and to obey the law of God just like the woman of the world who was seeking for things that it cannot satisfy many this morning have been seeking, are seeking yet yeah, their heart are not satisfied Jesus is inviting you says come unto me you see Jesus he looks into this congregation and he sees the woman, and he sees the man, and he sees a young man, a young woman. It's a child whose heart is troubled. He says, seize your efforts, for you can do nothing without me. Come to me. And let me speak about labor. And I find there are two, or more than two, types of labor that Jesus, or bad and brother, that Jesus is talking about here. You see, those who labor and have a laden. And I was asking myself, why, what's the difference between their statement, those who labor and have a laden? Do they mean the same thing? And I discovered that Jesus is very careful. 
You see, there are two types of burdens. There are burdens that we labor for. Burdens that we take upon ourselves. Burdens that we cause for our own self. Burdens that are not caused by people. We are the ones who labor and work very hard to get those burdens. Now, have you seen people who caught trouble? I mean, everything is okay. Everything seems to be going well until you do something and hell break loose. People who work hard to create trouble for themselves. You, you, you wanted maybe a, a quick, quick money. You wanted quick money. And you got yourself into questionable business deals. You thought no one would find out. And now you're in trouble with the laws of the land. Now you have sunk all the savings of your family. You are struggling. You work to hurt to get yourself in that space. You're bearing a burden. Jesus has come unto me. Even you who work for your pain, even you worked for your burdens, come unto me. Could be a young man, a young man or a young woman who has worked themselves hard through addiction. You know, it could be a drug addiction or sexual addiction or internet addiction or pornographic addiction or whatever kind of addiction. You put yourself in that space. Friends were telling you there is no right. Your parents were warning you, this is not right. You worked very hard. You kept it a secret. You would do everything to ensure your parents do not find out what you are doing. You did it in secret, but today it is troubling you in public. You are carrying a huge burden. You struggle to live this life. You can't function without that pill. You can function without that sex. You can function without watching that material. You put yourself there. You're addicted. You're in prison. You labored for your burdens. Even so, Jesus is inviting you this morning. Can you say amen? My grace is sufficient. Bring your burden unto me. Your soul is troubled. Come unto me that I may give you rest. I see you love me. You're struggling. You hate yourself. But come to me. I shall give you rest. Or maybe it's a young man or young woman who was raped by his relative or relative. And though it appears that you're okay from outside, inside you're broken, you're horrible, you do not appreciate life, you wonder why you were born, you're walking and walking, you're troubled, your heart is so sick. And you wonder what is new in the new year. Jesus says, I recognize your trouble. Come unto me. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But I just find there are some people whose burdens they labored for. But also, friends, there are some people whose burdens they never worked for. You see, the statement or the phrase heavy laden it means you may have heaped on yourself the burdens or somebody else may have heaped the burdens on you somebody loaded on you the burdens now Jesus recognizes there are some people in their sanctuary this morning those online watching and following this program Jesus recognizes there are some innocent burden bearers people who never did anything wrong for the misery for the trouble from the tribulations and afflictions and the pain they are simply innocent burden bearers they don't know what to do Jesus is sympathizing Savior he reaches out to you this morning he says I recognize your situation come unto me you see friends Indeed, there are many people sitting here this morning who are victims of circumstance. And do you know yourselves? The pain you're bearing today, the situation you find yourself in, the unfortunate situation in your life, you never expected, you never worked for, it just came your way. 
and you hear troubled, your heart has no peace, Jesus has sent me to you this morning. Maybe you lost a job, not because of any wrong you did, but because somebody somewhere was simply uncomfortable with your success. They worked very hard to frustrate you. They worked very hard to make you be removed from your job. You have taken too long maybe to graduate from your college. Maybe because your professor uh, sat on your grade. Because you turned down a seduction moves. And because of that, he said, she will never graduate. You are struggling in college. You are pure, standing upright with the Lord, but yet you are living in pain. Jesus says, I understand you are here in this new suburb of the new year 2024. I invite you to come unto me. And I am here this morning, friends, to let you know there is hope for the weary soul. There is hope. There is hope for the weary soul through Jesus Christ. You see, he says, come unto me and I will give you rest. The promise, the assurance is that as you come to me, you are not coming for stories. You are not coming to be shamed. You are not coming for anything else. You are coming to receive rest for your soul. To receive rest for your heart. Jesus is inviting you this morning that you may be at peace. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But I am feeling somebody needing this message this morning. He says, I will give you rest. And so friends, this morning... I just came to let you know you can trust Jesus with your burdens. Not one, not two, all of your burdens, bring them all to Jesus. Bring them all to Jesus. Give them all to him because he has been made the burden bearer of the universe. He carries your burdens. He carries your burden. You don't have to struggle carrying your burdens. Once you believe in Jesus, lay them at the feet of Jesus. He, he is a qualified burden bearer. You can trust him this morning. I came this morning to let you know, friends, that in a troubled world, like this one we're living in, you need rest for your soul. I stopped by this morning to let you know that in a world where wickedness seems to be thriving and overtaking righteousness, you need rest for your soul. I just came this morning to remind you that when you discover that your enemy is actually your closest friend and your heart is so troubled, you need rest for your soul. I came this morning to let you know when you feel troubled, tired, and tattered in the inner part of you, you need rest of your soul. This is found in Jesus. So Jesus is inviting us this morning. Come and give your burdens to him. I read a song somewhere. The rest of the song says, Oh soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. Yes, I promise you there is hope. For there is light for a look at the Savior. And a life more abundant and free. Only if you turn your eye upon Jesus. He says, come unto me. You labor and heavy laden. I shall give you rest. Psalm 55 verse number 22. David says, through the prayer. Cast your burden unto the Lord. And he will support you. He will lift you. He will strengthen you. God will never let you be second. He will always strengthen you in your pain 
he in your frustrations, he in your loneliness, Jesus is inviting you to come to him. And so friends, I suggest to us today that in this new year 2024, make Jesus your burden bearer. I propose to you today, if you want to be at peace in 2024, if you want to celebrate as you come to the end of 2024, if you want to realize your potential and go from one glory to another, make Jesus your burden bearer. Your short and dreams from 2023, give them to Jesus. The brokenness of your life that you've carried from 2023, you stepped into 2024 with them. Give them to Jesus. Give them all to Jesus because he, he is a qualified burden bearer. You see, he bore the burden of the entire universe on the cross. Though he was deemed to have lost it, we all know on Sunday morning, he resurrected to victory. And he says, in the world, you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Can you say amen? You can come to me. You can trust me. And Paul says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. He is inviting you this morning to bring your burdens to him because he understands the situation. Because he sympathizes with your tribulations. You see, friends, maybe yours is a temptation. And this temptation is so deep cutting, deep in you. And you wonder, how can I break off from this temptation? Jesus is inviting you to bring your temptation to him because he was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. Are you with me? Jesus is a qualified sympathizer of our situation because if you thought you are poor, he said, foxes of horse and birds of air of nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. He walked in the dirty street of Palestine, a poor man. He understands those who are poor. You can bring your poverty to him. Are you feeling frustrated, disappointed? Oh, I will let you know this morning. Jesus shared disappointment, frustrations. One day he looked at the people and he spoke and he cried and said, Oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, how often have I longed to gather your children together as the hands gather the chiefs, but you are not willing. He was so disappointed. He was so frustrated. He had to abandon them because they did never gave their hearts to him. He understands those who are frustrated. Hey, you feeling rejected? Jesus is acquainted with rejection. You see, before he died on the cross, the Bible says that as the disciples, when you check in the book of Mark chapter 15, verse number 19, in fact, the Bible says, his disciples left him and they never followed him. The only thing you see at the very close of his ministry is people Denying him. People. Denying him. People. Betraying him. He was rejected. He is acquainted to those who walk through the path of rejection. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Maybe you're feeling rejection in your life. Jesus has an experience in addressing rejection. Come to him. Maybe you're being ridiculed from every side. Jesus experienced ridicule. And again, the Bible says in Mark chapter 15, verse number 19, they struck him and spit on him. They called him names. They mocked him. If you are the son of God, say yourself, he was mocked. He understands those who walk through the path of mockery. You too can come to him. Maybe somebody this morning is walking through a path of loneliness and this is the greatest burden of your life. This is what has taken away your joy. It has eaten up your joy. You're so lonely in life. 
Let me remind you this morning, even you, Jesus says, I can address a situation because I once felt so rejected. I once felt so alone. In fact, the Bible says, he cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He felt completely alone, alone in this world. If you are there this morning and you're feeling alone, Jesus was there before you. You can come to him. He says, I understand your pain. I understand your tribulation. He understands your pain, your frustrations, your brokenness, your loneliness. He understands your emptiness, your sickness, your failed or failing marriage, your job situation, your business, your stubborn child. Jesus understands and invites you even in your financial constraints. Jesus understands. Come to him. Cast all your care unto him for he is burden bearer of the universe. Give them all to Jesus. You see, friends, Jesus, no matter what you're going through, I need to encourage you this morning, you have a God who is intimately acquainted with all your ways and tribulations. And he doesn't want to stand back Remaining distant from your pain. No, Jesus in this invite, come unto me. You will labor and I have laden and I shall give you rest. In that invite, Jesus wants to crawl down into the darkest part of your life where your pain found residence. Jesus wants to come there, not just to come, but to remove it, not just to remove your pain. He wants to wrap around you with his arms and whisper to you, it shall be well, my child. Jesus wants to give you a new beginning in this new year. Can you say amen? He is committed. Let's bring them all to me. He wants to whisper comfort to your pain. More than that, he wants to infuse you with his strength to withstand whatever comes your way in 2024. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But I just want to let you know this morning, you can give all your troubles to Jesus. And I want to invite you this morning, bring them all. Bring all your tears to him. Bring all your diseases to him. Bring all your sins to him. Bring all your frustrations to him. Bring all your shattered dreams to him. Bring all your, your bruised souls to him. Bring them all to Jesus and he shall give rest to your soul. I don't promise that 2024 You'll be better than 2023. But I can promise you, Jesus is willing to bear you up. There's new year. Jesus is so much willing to bear you up in every turn and twist of your life. Jesus is committed in this special invite today that if you come to him, he will make your life get peace and comfort because he never promised we shall not go through tribulations. But his promise is, even as we go through our afflictions, our tribulations, he will be there with us. Just come to me. Come to me. And I want to invite choristers here front and give us the song nearer to the heart of God. Song number 495. Nearer to the heart of God. I want to invite somebody this morning. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I want to invite somebody who feels that in their life, 2023 was a struggle. They are still carrying a burden. They are still carrying pain. They are still carrying depression. They are still carrying frustrations, disappointment. You are here this morning. 2024 does not look brighter as you see it from your perspective. 
Jesus is inviting you to come and try 2024 together with him because he will give you rest.